Suge Knight and Cat Williams are two of the most polarizing figures in Hollywood. So when news started to break around 2010 about their partnership, everyone knew that there was bound to be drama. Recently, Cat had this to say about his relationship with Suge Knight. Yeah, it's doing good. Doing good? Really? That has to be the most awkward response from someone everyone thinks is a fearless speaker. It gives you the impression that Suge might have somehow instilled the fear of God in Cat. However, let's talk about how Suge has cleared up the drama with Cat. Cat on his relationship with Suge Knight. Unless you have been living under a rock or on some long lost island somewhere, you would understand that it is no secret that Suge Knight and Cat go way back. However, it was not until the early 2010s that the internet started keeping track of their friendship. Knight, recognizing Williams' talent and potential, became his tour manager in 2012. This partnership would prove to be a turning point in both their lives. First of all, you have to admit that when two characters as polarizing as Suge Knight and Cat Williams combine, they can only breed trouble, and that is what characterizes their relationship. When Williams embarked on his comedy tours, Knight always stood by his side, providing guidance and support. But their bond was not just professional. Knight saw something in Williams that others often overlooked, a small-statured man with an unparalleled comedic gift. Knight believed that many of the controversies surrounding Williams were a result of others antagonizing him due to his size and success. He drew parallels between Williams' experiences and those of other legendary entertainers like Mike Tyson and Richard Pryor, who often made headlines for their behavior. That's what happens when you're the best in the business. Sometimes you just have rough times. Knight's support and understanding of Williams' struggles forged a deep bond between the two. Williams, in turn, appreciated Knight's loyalty and reliability when he felt abandoned by others. During interviews in 2013, Cat said, We have business together and number one, I respect what he thinks musically first and foremost. I know that he has never done anything wrong to me and he actually came through for me at a time when I didn't think that anybody was going to step up and he did. Williams' unwavering loyalty and willingness to stand by Knight, despite his controversial past, showcased the depth of their friendship. Together, they formed an unlikely alliance that would challenge the norms of the entertainment industry. Despite a few challenges that tested the strength of their bond, from legal troubles to public scrutiny, their unwavering support for each other remained steadfast. In 2012, Williams was entangled in a web of controversies, legal issues, and physical altercations, but Knight was always by his side supporting him. He firmly believed that these incidents were a result of others provoking Williams due to his stature and immense talent. He said of Cat in 2012, people test him because he's small and the best Best comedian of all time. When people see him, they don't separate the Cat Williams on stage from the Cat Williams just being a regular person. Williams' newfound friendship with Knight brought him both admiration and criticism from the entertainment industry. He was aware of the attention their alliance garnered, but he refused to let it sway his opinion of Knight or their partnership. Well, you know, I didn't realize that me knowing him was going to be taken in all the different directions that it has been taken to. Williams valued Knight's musical insights and respected him as a friend. He saw beyond Knight's past reputation and chose to focus on their shared interests and mutual support. Their friendship continued to flourish, with Williams appreciating Knight's loyalty and reliability. He recognized that the judgment of others should not dictate his choices or the people he associates with. One notable event where Suge's loyalty was tested happened in Seattle. It all began on a seemingly ordinary evening at a local bar where Cat Williams was in a heated altercation. According to the Seattle police, Williams allegedly brandished a pool cue at a bar manager refusing to back down, but the chaos didn't end there. As the situation escalated, Williams took his aggression outside the bar, targeting an unsuspecting family. Recklessly, Williams hurled a cigarette at a woman as she entered her car, striking her in the eye. And if that wasn't enough, he then proceeded to throw a rock at the vehicle, causing further damage. Williams was swiftly apprehended and taken into custody on charges of harassment, assault, and obstructing police. Handcuffed and escorted away, Williams' once charismatic persona was overshadowed by the weight of his actions. As the doors of the King County Jail closed behind him, Williams was left to face the consequences of his behavior. But one man was there to save the day. Yes, you guessed it, Suge Knight. Mind you, this was a very disruptive time for Cat, as he also seemed to be in constant run-ins with the law. Cat was always messing up and like a concerned mother, Suge was always there to clean up. You could tell that Suge cared for him when other people began to distance themselves. Not long before this incident, Cat was involved in another incident where he slapped a Target employee. On that day, Cat made an unexpected stop at a local Target store in Sacramento. As he strolled through the aisles, he crossed paths with a Target employee named John. The exact reason for their argument remains unknown, as there is no audio footage available. However, by observing John's body language, it is clear that he was not looking for a fight. But in his subsequent special, Afterlife Priceless, Cat quipped that the man had called him a pussy and nigga in a sudden
sudden and unexpected turn of events, Cat's temper flared, and without warning, he wound up his hand and delivered a powerful slap to John's face. The force of the slap was so intense that John instinctively placed his hand on his chest, clearly in shock and pain. The incident happened so quickly that those nearby were left in disbelief, unsure of how to react to this sudden burst of violence. As the stunned onlookers processed what had just happened, John, visibly shaken, pulled out his phone and dialed the police. He was determined to seek justice for the assault he had just endured. Meanwhile, Cat, seemingly unfazed by the consequences of his actions, made a daring escape. He spotted an electric cart nearby and swiftly hopped on, using it as his getaway vehicle. The sight of Cat zooming through the store on the electric cart was both shocking and comical, leaving customers and employees in a state of disbelief. As Cat made his escape, the chaos and confusion at the Target store reached its peak. Shoppers and employees were left in shock, trying to understand the audacity of Cat's actions. Little did anyone know that this was just the beginning of the madness. Cat's actions would soon lead to a wild three-wheeled chase through the streets of Sacramento. But after the arrest a few days later and barely hours after Cat's subsequent bail, Cat was involved in a brawl at Hollywood's Eden Club. As the video begins, chaos is already in full swing. People are shouting, fists are flying, and the atmosphere is tense. In the midst of it all, we catch a glimpse of Cat Williams trying to distance himself from the escalating violence. Cat, wearing a look of concern on his face, chooses to walk behind a nearby dumpster, seemingly trying to avoid getting caught up in the chaos. But little did he know that the night was far from over. On the other side of the brawl, we spot Shug Knight, a towering figure in a tan, long sleeve shirt. Shug is seen attempting to go after someone, his anger fueling the intensity of the situation. The camera captures a moment when Shug connects with a punch, but the actual impact is obscured from view. Meanwhile, Cat Williams, realizing the escalating danger, makes a swift decision to escape the chaos. He is seen being pursued by an unidentified individual, adding to the tension and uncertainty of the situation. With adrenaline pumping, Cat manages to reach a black SUV just in time, slipping into the safety of the vehicle before his pursuer can catch up to him. It's a moment of relief amidst the chaos. On the other side of the brawl, Suge Knight jumps into a white SUV. Without hesitation, he guns the engine and speeds away, almost hitting several people in the parking lot. As the dust settles and the chaos subsides, the aftermath of the club fight leaves everyone in shock. Cat Williams and Suge Knight, both detained and cited by the police, find themselves facing yet another legal hurdle. The news of the brawl spreads like wildfire, capturing the attention of the media and the public alike. Speculations and theories about the cause of the altercation begin to circulate. Some felt because of this incident, Cat started to become paranoid. Cat's time with Suge was very torrid and filled with uncertainty fueling his paranoia. To understand the full extent of Cat Williams' paranoia, we must first take a trip back to the early 2010s, when his career was on the rise. Cat had established himself as a comedic force to be reckoned with, captivating audiences with his quick wit and unfiltered humor. It was during this time that he found himself in need of a manager who could guide him through the complexities of the entertainment industry. Enter Suge Knight, a controversial figure known for his involvement in the music industry and his connections to some of the biggest names in hip-hop. Suge saw potential in Cat and believed he could help him reach new heights. With Suge by his side, Cat's star continued to rise, and he became a household name in the comedy world. However, behind the scenes, a cloud of paranoia began to hang over Cat. As his fame grew, so did his suspicions and fears. He became convinced that he was being watched, followed, and even targeted by unknown forces. This paranoia seeped into every aspect of his life, affecting his personal relationships, his performances, and his overall well-being. Some people actually speculated that Cat indulged in substances other than alcohol and marijuana. There were speculations that he was taking harder substances, and it is not hard to believe them. Because if you think about the kinds of crimes he committed and some aspects of his mannerism, it does feel like he was always three sheets to the wind, if you catch my drift. One incident that stood out was when Cat's friend approached Suge about organizing a show featuring Cat. Suge's response was cryptic, warning against investing money in Cat at that time. He expressed uncertainty about Cat's reliability and his ability to show up for scheduled events. Rumors of Cat's alleged drug use also added fuel to the fire. While Cat adamantly denied any involvement with hard drugs, his erratic behavior and missed performances fueled speculation. Some attributed his behavior to substance abuse, while others believed it was a result of the mounting pressure and paranoia he experienced under Suge's management. Another incident that exemplified Cat's troubled state of mind was the infamous incident involving a child hiding in his closet. Reports surfaced that Cat had been harboring a young boy in his home, leading to a police investigation. The incident only added to the narrative of Cat's unraveling mental state, further fueling the rumors and speculation surrounding his relationship with Suge. But it wasn't just Cat who was caught up in this web of paranoia. Suge himself faced legal troubles during this time, with multiple pending cases that could have resulted in severe consequences. One of these cases involved a confrontation with a photographer, where Suge and Cat were accused 
of assaulting and stealing the photographer's camera. While Cat received probation for his involvement, Suge faced the possibility of a three-strike sentence, which could have meant a lifetime behind bars. As time went on, Cat's paranoia continued to escalate, leading to strained relationships and missed opportunities. Promoters and event organizers became wary of booking Cat, unsure if he would show up or deliver a performance that met expectations. This, in turn, affected Cat's reputation and his standing in the industry. However, it's important to note that Cat eventually found his way back to stability and success. He managed to overcome the challenges he faced during his time with Suge and has since made a remarkable comeback in the comedy world. Through therapy and self-reflection, Cat was able to confront his fears and regain control over his life and career. Cat on Drugs in November 2008, rumors started to circulate that Cat was beginning to show symptoms of some mental issues. It all began with a series of alarming events that left his family and fans deeply concerned. Just days before the incident, Williams had been arrested on weapons charges in New York, and his absence on Late Night with Conan O'Brien raised eyebrows. But it was what happened next that would surprise everyone in the entertainment industry. On that fateful day in Sumter, South Carolina, Williams' erratic behavior reached a tipping point. His family, fearing for his well-being, had had to intervene. In the early morning hours of November 14th, Williams was spotted wandering the grounds of the Mount Vernon Inn, disheveled and seemingly lost. Witnesses described him wearing nothing but a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. Concerned motel employees contacted local law enforcement, unsure of what to make of the situation. Officers arrived on the scene, finding Williams disoriented and in need of help. He approached them, asking for directions to the nearest hospital. It was clear that he was confused. Local attorney Gerald Diaz, who happened to be nearby, by, was approached by Williams later that morning. In a paranoid state, Williams expressed concerns about violated rights and conspiracies against him. DS recognized the severity of the situation and urged Williams to seek medical attention. At first, Williams resisted, refusing to acknowledge the gravity of his condition. But his family, determined to see him receive the help he needed, returned with deputies at noon. Together, they convinced Williams to accompany them to the nearest mental health facility. The details of Williams' time in the mental health facility were kept private to respect his privacy. However, it was revealed that he was in a manic depressive state, a condition that had gone untreated for far too long. The absence of medication had exacerbated his symptoms, leading to the troubling incident that unfolded in Sumter. For two weeks, Williams remained in the mental institution, receiving the care and medication he desperately needed. It was a challenging and transformative period in his life, as he confronted his demons head on and worked towards recovery. But his release from the mental institution opened a revolving door for his movement between prison and the courthouse. The the beginning of his arrest actually began on November 13, 2006 at Los Angeles International Airport. It was on this fateful day that Williams was in the midst of a shocking incident that would have lasting consequences. As he passed through airport security, a stolen gun was discovered in his briefcase, leading to his immediate arrest. This was really a taint to Williams' reputation and put his career in jeopardy. Eventually, he was sentenced to three years probation and credited with three days served in jail. This incident marked the beginning of a pattern of legal troubles that would follow Williams throughout his career. In November 2009, Cat Williams found himself in the midst of another legal storm, this time in Coweta County. He was charged with criminal trespass and burglary of a residence. According to reports, Williams was accused of stealing coins and jewelry from the residence, further adding to the gravity of the situation. The arrest not only raised eyebrows, but also cast a shadow over Williams' career, leaving fans and industry insiders questioning his actions. As the details of the case unfolded, it became clear that Williams' legal troubles were far from over. In December 2012, Cat Williams was arrested again. This time Williams was accused of child endangerment after weapons were discovered in his home. The presence of these weapons raised concerns about the safety and well-being of the children in his care, leading to his immediate arrest. The incident shed light on a darker side of Williams' personal life, leaving many questioning his judgment and ability to provide a safe environment for those around him. On February 28, 2016, Cat Williams found himself at the center of another disturbing incident. Williams, along with his entourage and security team, was accused of physically attacking and stealing cell phones from five women who were visiting Atlanta for the weekend. The incident tarnished his reputation further and added another chapter to his troubled history with the law. 2014 Arrest in 2014, the media started to report the arrest of Shug and Kat, this time for another robbery incident. According to the lawsuit filed by Redden, the incident began when Knight accused her of taking photos of him and his son as they exited through the back door of the studio. Knight, described as being visibly angry, quickly approached Redden, hurling derogatory insults at her and threatening her with physical harm. He repeatedly called her a derogatory term and menacingly stated that he had someone who would beat your motherfucking 
fucking ass. To further intimidate Redden, Knight lifted his shirt, exposing his waistband, suggesting that he was armed. This aggressive behavior left Redden feeling terrified and vulnerable. Meanwhile, as Redden attempted to flee the premises, she was confronted by Cat Williams and a woman believed to be Williams' girlfriend. The woman allegedly knocked Redden to the ground, causing her to sustain severe injuries. Williams then stood over Redden, demanding that she delete any photos she had taken of Knight. In a forceful act, Williams forcibly took Redden's camera from her possession. The encounter left Redden with injuries to her neck, back, fingers, wrist, and other parts of her body. The physical harm she endured was not the only consequence, as the incident also caused her great emotional pain and suffering. Redden even experienced probable neurological and cognitive problems as a result of the traumatic encounter. Following the incident, both Knight and Williams were arrested on suspicion of stealing a camera from Leslie Redden, the photographer involved in the altercation. They were subsequently charged with one count of robbery each. These charges added to the already mounting legal troubles that Suge Knight was facing at the time. He was scheduled to stand trial on charges of murder, attempted murder, and a hit-and-run incident. If convicted of murder, Knight faced the possibility of life in prison. As for Cat Williams, his involvement in the robbery incident further tarnished his reputation. The comedian found himself entangled in a serious legal matter that would have significant repercussions on his personal and professional life. It's important to note that both Suge Knight and Cat Williams pleaded not guilty to the robbery charges. Knight attorney maintained that the hip-hop mogul did not steal the camera from Redden. However, Redden alleged that there was a physical altercation between her and Knight, which further complicated the legal proceedings. The robbery incident and the subsequent legal actions against Knight and Williams were not the only legal troubles Knight faced during that time. In addition to the robbery charges, Knight was also involved in a wrongful death lawsuit filed by Lillian Carter, the widow of a man who was tragically killed after Knight ran over him with his pickup truck. The lawsuit named Knight, along with Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and others involved in the NWA biopic Straight Outta Compton as defendants. While Knight was the only one charged with a crime concerning the hit-and-run incident, Lillian Carter accused Universal Studios of negligence, claiming that their actions, or lack thereof, contributed to her husband's death. In a recent podcast interview with ex-Ghetto Boys rapper Willie D, Cat Williams revealed a side of the story that was never before made public. Contrary to what the press initially portrayed, the arrest was not a simple case of robbery. It was a complex situation that arose from a disaster desire to protect a child. According to him, Suge and Kat were at a meeting with a hologram company in Beverly Hills, and Suge had brought his son along. Uh, Suge has brought his son with him, who's five years old. And before we go into this meeting, Kat described, Suge's son runs behind the dumpster and urinates. And a lady films his penis out. He continued to say, peeing behind the dumpster and then says, oh, I thought that was Kat's kid. The misunderstanding escalated quickly, leading to robbery charges being filed against both Cat Williams and Suge Knight. The Los Angeles County District Attorney accused them of stealing Leslie Redden's camera, an independent photographer, outside a studio in Beverly Hills on September 5th, 2014. The charges were a shock to both Williams and Knight as they found themselves facing the possibility of significant prison time. Williams was potentially looking at seven years in custody, while Knight's prior conviction meant he could be sent to 30 years to life in state prison. In 2017, he pleaded no contest to stealing the camera, accepting a plea deal that resulted in three years of probation and a requirement to attend anger management classes. On the other hand, Shug's trial was delayed until the resolution of his unrelated murder trial. He was then sentenced to 28 years to life for manslaughter. Fast forward to August 2014, and Cat Williams took to the stage for his HBO special, Priceless Afterlife. It was during this stand-up performance that Williams addressed the arrest and made a joke that would become the stuff of legend. With his trademark wit and fearless approach to comedy, Williams quipped, Man, life has a way of sometimes sending you subtle wake-up calls. He continued to say, Anytime you are standing next to Suge Knight and you are the person going to jail, that is a wake-up call for your ass. The audience erupted in laughter, but the joke carried a deeper meaning. Williams was acknowledging the gravity of the situation and the unexpected turn of events that had led to his arrest. Standing next to Suge Knight, a figure known for his controversial reputation, served as a wake-up call for Williams. It was a moment of reflection and realization that would shape his future. In the HBO special, Williams went on to credit the arrest as one of the main reasons he decided to turn his life around for the better. It became a turning point in his personal journey, prompting him to reevaluate his choices 
resources and prioritize his well-being. The incident served as a catalyst for change, propelling Williams towards a path of self-improvement and growth. The joke itself encapsulated the absurdity of the situation. Here were two larger-than-life personalities, one known for his comedic genius and the other for his controversial reputation, standing side by side in the face of legal consequences. It was a moment that defied expectations and highlighted the unpredictable nature of life. The incident and subsequent joke made by Cat Williams not only captured the attention of the public, but also sparked discussions about the intersection of fame, controversy, and personal growth. It served as a reminder that even in the midst of adversity, there is always room for humor and self-reflection. That brings us to the end of this video. For more videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.